What do you think is should be the proper income tax rate? Well, the best would be zero. I mean, we live most of our history with a zero income tax, but you'd have to have a proper size government. You'd have to have a proper role for government. You can't be the policeman of the world and not have an income tax. So I would not have all my troops around the world. I'd be bring the troops home, and I wouldn't have a, a military industrial complex that demands so much, but I wouldn't have a welfare state either. And under those conditions, you don't need an income tax. And uh, I think that's the way it, it should be. You, you got to raise money. Some Somehow, right? I mean, so how would you raise money if you had zero percent income tax? Well, how did they raise it before 1913? You know, they had excise taxes and some import taxes, but it wasn't the matter of how you raise the money. It was who was demanding the money. But there's an endless demand when you concede so much to the military-industrial complex and a, and a militaristic foreign policy, and you say that you have to redistribute wealth from cradle to grave and take care of people. I, I think when people take money from you and give it to somebody else, that's equivalent to stealing from you. I don't want to take any of your money. I want you to invest it and create jobs. So, uh, and, and I'm personally convinced that I'm on the side of the uh, humanitarian side of this, because if you care about poor people and jobs, uh, you're going to have them more likely if you do it that way rather than the government spending the money because just look at where we've been with all this spending and printing of money and bailing out. Who, who, gets, who gets all the benefits when you run a system like that where you're pretending to redistribute wealth? You, you, get, you serve the special interests and the powerful corporations. Then when you get into trouble, who gets bailed out? They get bailed out. Wall Street's and the banks get bailed out. And who gets stuck? It's the taxpayers. That's why you need income tax, so you take care of the wealthy. So now, look, I mean, you have to get rid of this redistributive mentality that is, is right and proper and moral to take from some and give to others. Because when you endorse that system always intended to help the poor, you help those who distribute the wealth and who are on the gravy train. So uh, the, the, the corporations benefit, the people get the crumbs. So look who lost their houses and lost the jobs. We were propping up housing, housing for everybody and give it a gift, low interest loans and all this. It intended to help the poor people have houses. But there were a lot of big companies and mortgage companies made a lot of money and the builders made money on the way up. They get into trouble with over speculation. We bail them out. We cause a recession and the poor people lose their jobs and they lose their houses. I, I cannot see how anybody could endorse that system. Uh, Congressman Paul, the Federal Reserve there, I know one of your biggest legislative accomplishments was with Congressman Alan Grayson in auditing the Fed and that was very good. Uh, but I'm curious about what you think about credit, because you and I have had this discussion before, and I'm not sure a lot of people know this. W w what do you think should be the credit policy of the, of the United States? Should you be able to borrow money to buy a house, a car, et cetera? Oh, oh sure. In a free market, you can do that. But the market generates the credit. You know, if I had an automobile and you and I had a transaction and, uh, you, and I want $10,000, I can extend you credit and all of a sudden uh, there's $10,000 worth of credit. Or an automobile company could do that. Or a bank could do that. But the credit really is backed up by savings. The, the crime that is being committed today is that the credit comes out of thin air. Uh, in the old days, what you had to do is you had to put the money in this and you had to work. You had to live, you had to save, you put your money in the bank, and then they loan it out for you. Today, or for the couple decades, there's been essentially no savings. And the Fed says, well, interest rates are, uh, are awfully low, but there's no savings. What we're going to do is just give more credit. And it, it's a false signal. It caused all kinds of malinvestment and all this debt accumulation. So artificial me, credit me, by the Fed is wrong. It's, uh, it's, it, it is uh, an immoral, illegal act, really. Let me follow up on that real quick. Though. What if a kid that's in your district, a poor kid in Texas, got good grades, wants to go to school, doesn't have the money for it because he's poor? Uh, do you think he should be able to, the government should give him a helping hand and give him an opportunity? No. Or should he be able to get a loan? Or that's it, tough luck, you're poor, well, you don't get an education. Uh, well, no, I mean, you're the government, it's your money. I don't have a right to come to you and say, my poor kid in uh, Texas needs an education. I come to you and knock on the door and say, give me $500. Uh, but we send the IRS agent and then it's okay. So no, I have no right to take money from you and it, nobody has a right to somebody else's wealth. You have a right to your life and you have a right to 
your property, but you don't have a, a, a an education isn't a right. Medical care is not a right. Education, uh, these these are things that you have to earn. Now you might ask, well, what kind of a system would that be? Well, I grew up with that system, but prices were different. There was no inflation. My tuition was three hundred and fifty dollars a semester. I had jobs in the summertime. I could earn it. I, I, when I went to medical school, there were loans available if I'd have needed them. But it was a completely different world. Today, so, but there were loans. Today, but we, there were the, loans. Did you take advantage yeah, of no, those it loans? Was the, no, it was through the school. The school made the loans. There were no government loans. There were All no right, government so, loans. So, but you're okay with the school giving loans then? Oh, sure. I mean, that's credit and people, endowments. And cur that's what would happen. But prices would be different. Kids today, even if they work, as soon as they work, we tax them. You know, if they're a waitress or a waiter, we tax their tips. So we encourage them to work. Then they don't have enough money. The prices go up on the tuition. And, uh, and then we give them grants. And then they get out of college and they owe $200,000. It, it makes no sense whatsoever. Right, I don't know how anybody can justify. <laughs> Congressman, you know, I know you're big online, so we asked... Uh